Hi, I'm Gulchehra Bakhtiarovna. Welcome to our 11th lesson. Our topic is Horizon. Travel will make you more creative, expand your horizons. Today, we will speak about what is Horizon, give the definition to this word, see an examples, then learn by heart Horizon contained phrases, then travel to beautiful and amazing places of the world, read about the importance of books in broadening our horizon. Then we deal with the grammar rules and do tasks. Our today's topic for grammar is inversion. Ok, let's begin. What is horizon? It's the line at which the Earth's surface and the sky appear to meet. Here the Earth surface and the sky meets. For example, the sun rose above the horizon. The sun is rising here above the horizon. Horizon is this line. Here also the horizon is this line. The line where the sky meets water. This white line is horizon. Here the horizon is this line. So this line is the horizon. It is our eye level. For example, if you are an artist painting this thing, your eye level is horizon. It doesn't matter if you are peering up or down, the horizon line remains the same. It's flat like still water and it's your eye level. If you move your body up and down, then the horizon line, your eye level, moves up and down. Let's learn horizon contained phrases. We have the phrase broaden your horizon. It's expanding one's range of interests, activities and knowledge. They want to broaden their horizon with a change of scenery and culture. We also can say expand one's horizon. To expand someone's horizon means to gain experiences and to learn about different cultures and ways of living. People often use this phrase to talk about visiting other countries, getting new jobs or getting more education. Expanding your horizon sounds very positive and optimistic. The second, beyond the horizon is a metaphor meaning that something lies so far away, ahead that one cannot see it. In literal physical terms, this is due to the curvature of the earth as well as the terrain features. On the horizon, it means imminent or just becoming apparent. For example, travel, travel could be on the horizon. Next phrase, just often refer to something just over the horizon, meaning that something good is imminent. Maybe it's not going to happen immediately, but we can expect it soon. The horizon is a symbol of hope. Next, we have the phrases on horizon and at horizon. If we say on horizon, we are emphasizing the perspective that the horizon is a hori horizontal line on which something can sit. We can see it. If we say at horizon, we are emphasizing that the horizon is a point in the distance at which something can be. We can't see it, but we wait, we're afraid of um, that this thing will happen. Okay, event horizon. The event horizon is the boundary defining the region or space around a black hole from which nothing, not even light can escape. In other words, the escape velocity velocity its speed for an object within the event horizon exceeds the speed of light. The last phrase is below the horizon. It simply means that the effects are not immediately visible. You can see them from land there beyond the horizon and below the water line, some depth in the ocean, although some is visible on the shore line. So let's see. Now we have notion about the horizon and horizon related phrases. So horizon is everything. 
uh, in the world we can say for example if we broaden our horizon we gain the experiences uh, get the knowledge so now we will travel visit unbelievable places around the world so that is we broaden our horizons we see the places which we have never seen before we gain some experiences we get knowledge about these places tunnel of love it's in ukraine this beautiful natural train tunnel is said to grant the wishes of visiting love birds it's just out this outside the city of Kleven in Ukraine a nearly two mile stretch of private railway has turned the surrounding trees into an enchanting natural tunnel so beautiful and amazing place Your train transport the woods. Tulip field in Netherlands. In late April through early May, the tulip field in Netherlands colorfully burst into the full bloom. Fortunately, there were hundreds of flower fields dotted throughout the Dutch countryside, which means that tulips are never very far away. different colors like in a fairy tale Salar de Uyuni one of the world's largest mirrors in Bolivia it is the world's largest salt flat and 10,582 square kilometers it is in the Daniel Campos province in Potosi, in southwest Bolivia, near the crest of the Andes, and an elevation of 3,656 meters above sea level. It's like a mirror. Salt attracts the sky. Amazing place for traveling for dreaming Hitachi Seaside Park in Japan it's covering an area of 190 hectares the park features blooming flowers around the year the park has become known for its baby blue eyes it's ice caves in Alaska when ice is melting the same scene appears every year you should travel there before melting of ice so enjoy watching the entire video yourself and write about the place which you like the best and why find the information expand your horizons and write essay about this place just just description essay describe Enjoy the music. Think about life, about beautiful things, about your life.
let's speak about the importance of books in your life books are your best friend books are something to fall in love with books have many options you feel never lonely books are good advisor for you it's good guide you can take to exciting journeys reading descriptions reading the books you get knowledge from unknown to known what does reading give you it gives knowledge thinking ability, communication, content, orating, positive attitude, vocabulary, it gives you confidence, ability to take decisions, ability to face craft, great features. How can you improve your reading? Getting start, start easy, go slow, first understand, remember the level, read between the line make it a habit try to relate don't wait don't perceive the don't jump to conclusion read in detail you don't know what to read just read magazines to enjoy yourself to get some interesting humorous um, stories about celebrities read novels read newspapers to know everyday news read journals read articles read online something search blogs search the internet now it's time for grammar today we speak about inversion so what is inversion inversion means putting the verb before the subject <coughs> It's a literary technique in which the normal order of two words is reversed, generally for emphasis or special effect. It makes a sentence sound striking or unusual, it also sounds quite formal. Sentences with inversion are less common in everyday English. We can use it in literature. In a sentence with no special effect or emphasis, the normal order of words is retained. For example, I have never seen such a beautiful rose. It's normal word order. Never have I seen such a beautiful rose. It's inversion. We have changed the place. Here, subject is in the first place. Here, subject is after verb. This is an inversion. In example, to inversion is used to emphasize the fact that in your whole lifetime you have not seen such a beautiful rose. It is sometimes difficult to remember when inversion is or can be used. Here are some guidelines and examples to help you. In formal everyday English, inversion is used to make questions. For example, does he? Can you? After so, neither, no. For example, so do I, neither do I, no do I. In written English as well as in a formal style, inversion can be used in the following cases. After negative adverbial expressions, for example, under no circumstances can we accept credit card. It's inversion. Normal form of this sentence will be we can accept credit cards under no circumstances. Second, in no way can he be held responsible. And so on. After adverbial expressions of place, round the corner came the postman. It's inversion. The places are changed. Now the normal word order of this word is the postman came round the corner. In English, subject is always in the first place. After seldom, rarely, never and little, inversion is used. Seldom have I seen such a beautiful view. Its inversion in normal form order of this sentence is I have seldom seen such a beautiful view. 
after hardly, scarcely, barely, no sooner when one thing happens after another. Hardly had I begun to speak when I was interrupted. After adverbial expressions beginning with only and not only, only after the meeting did I realize the importance of the subject, its inversion. The normal form of this sentence is I did realize the importance of the subject only after the meeting. Conditional inversions In conditional sentence we can sometimes replace the if with an inversion. If I had known it would be so difficult I would never have enrolled. After exclamations with here and there, here comes the winner. The normal word order is the winner is coming here or comes here. And with verbs of reporting such as say or ask in direct speech. I love you, said Harry. Harry said, I love you. How far is it? asked the passenger. So. These are the examples for inversions, and let's see them in tasks and try to do it ourselves. So in this example, it's normal sentence without inversion. We should change this sentence. So let's see. I had hardly begun to apologize when the door closed. The inversion form of this sentence is Hardly had I begun to apologize when the door closed. Okay. I have seldom heard such a talented singer. What is inversion of this sentence? It's a hint for you. Seldom have I heard such a talented singer. So next question, please do it yourself, try to do it yourself, you have 5 seconds for each question, then we'll check you, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The answer is, had John known that she liked curry, he would have brought her to an Indian restaurant. Next question. The artist rarely paid attention to his agent's advice. So it's hint. Rarely artists, it begins with these words. Okay, check yourself. Rarely did the artist pay attention to his agent's advice. Okay, the last question for us is, he had never felt so depressed. It begins with never had he felt so depressed. I hope you have understand everything uh, you have understood. So in your final exams, you will have the grammar rules, the vocabulary tests, that's why try to learn rules and vocabulary and get good mark. So wish you success in your exams. Good luck. Bye.